pretty nice spot opening, finding a shack here, opening into the short stack for the bounty. Puts me all in, or he goes all in on the flop. Uh, easy call. I can have a bunch of draws there, but fortunately he had a pair. Now Sam is the short stack with 11 blinds. Another family pot here, four ways. Uh, wow, yeah. Ace king versus bottom set. This is gonna be. This is gonna be a big one. Yeah, nines has to call. We just won over. Wow, threes just calls as well. And a blank turn. Yeah, I like to check here on the turn. I would be a little bit worried. Just for pot controlling. Yeah, I like it. Oh, that might save him. Let's see what sizing easy with aces goes for here. I think he should go like two thirds. Yeah, go small. Wow, what a fold. That's really impressive. I don't think I would have folded there, to be honest. I would just be too worried that he would, <laughs> it would be value betting worse or have some weird float like ace queen with a back door or something like that. Um, we lost Sam in ninth. Ran pretty bad. Yeah, I could three bet a call. Calling is probably better given the stack dynamics now. A lot of 20 and 30 big blind stacks. And when we have 70, we really don't want to mess too much out of position versus the ship leader. Really good board uh, for the caller in the small. He could even consider leading there on the flop, I think. But yeah, betting the turn is fine as well. Wow, it goes to showdown. Yeah, usually when we have the missed draws, we don't really want to use those as our bluffing candidates on the river because those are the type of holdings that we we want our opponent to have. We want him to have, you know, the ace queen and the ace jacks. So when we have those, it makes it less likely that he has those combos. King 10 raising here for value, obviously looking to get it in. Get that nice bounty. Wow, well, now he folds ace queen. See, that would have made more sense to continue ace queen there than to continue the king queen in the three bet pot where ranges are so much tighter. Like here, he actually beats a lot of the villains, check raise bluffs on the flop. But, uh, you know, as we can see, it was, it was right. Small, small. <laughs> this is uh, alarm bells ringing here. But yeah, he's now he's in the spot where he's getting such a good price with the ace queen with the ace nine suited, so it's gonna try to punish him for uh, turning his hand sort of face up with a small uh, three bet discipline fold there with fives. I like it. Oh, Thirty with the ship leader in the big. Uh, again, similar uses this a like, really tiny. Three bet size. Yeah, I'm not loving it. And then we get the snap check on the 10 high board. Not sure what this means. So I proceed with caution, checks back, uh, try to pair up or pick up some more equity with my back doors. Does not happen and I'm not falling for it. So I'm just going to fold here. I'm not actually thinking there. I'm just making it seem that, you know, my decision wasn't as straightforward as it was. Uh, tens should three bet call here. Wow. Oh, he's playing pretty snug so far. Uh, maybe this is what he's thinking. Yeah, he wants to trap this guy. Uh, this is a pretty nasty spot for me. I remember I did fold here, but looking back at it now, I think probably would have gone with it. 
I was a little bit concerned about Kazun's flat there, though. Because I think he he would be trapping here a fair bit with this guy in the big. And uh, yeah, that's what he did. But saying that, he could also have a lot of speculative hands that he's hoping that the big blind will complete and then go for his bounty. So you never know. I'm happy I got away. Uh, King 10 should defend. Both players pair up. Small C bet. Uh, yeah, I should just call here, I think. Could check race sometimes, but not under these circumstances. Should go check, check. Wow. Not sure how much block betting accomplishes here. Uh, you're just basically getting called by a king or better. So you're either shopping or you lose. Yeah, easy fold when we get raised. Yeah, the only thing it accomplishes is blocking our opponent from potentially bluffing. Not sure what Amino Last is. Wow. That is aggressive. <laughs> Did not expect to see that, uh, considering how he's been playing. The ace five suited is a very popular four bet all in candidate of that stack depth, just for the obvious reasons that it always has plenty of equity, even when we do get called. We're blocking aces, obviously, versus like any other hand, we have at least 30%. So. Not the end of the world, but we're also going to take it down a bunch, so it's just always dicey to do it from under the gun. Trip queens on the board. Nice. Good fold there. Um, I think I would have opened there. This normal circumstances, but not with ICM opening into the ship leader. And also another thing to consider is like every time we get involved, and this is the reason for being for tightening up at the final table. So every time we open up the action and someone three bets us and they get a cold four bet, then we're involved in that action, and then either that's gonna cost us or is gonna potentially prevent someone from going broke and, and us being able to ladder up. So that's why we should always aim to play tighter ranges than normal because we want the other our opponents to get involved and uh battle each other i think that's quite self-explanatory but it's worth mentioning it anyway king jack king jack action also popular three bet candidate Kind of surprised to see Peppa Pig fold deuces there. I like it, but considering how he's been playing so far, I was surprised that he folded the pair. This should be taken down. Um. Yeah, good open. Three bet incoming. Four bet incoming. I mean, now when we're seven handed, I think this has to go in. This is too good of a spot. I say that, and then I was tanking with queens. <laughs> so he did the same thing there. So obviously, his plan was, I imagine at least, that if Easy with Aces and Graftical both get it in, he can get away. But obviously, he was calling off Graftical there. I should probably fold here. Yeah, good. <laughs> it's easy when, when you know when you see my opponents as a six eye. Uh, you think, all right, this is close. But if they had like ace jack or whatever, that would be like, oh, this would be a terrible open. It's easy how the mind gets result oriented by seeing the, all the whole cards all of a sudden. 
But if I close my eyes, I think that should definitely not be an open as a standard in the under ICM considerations. And also when I'm the shorter stack, um, my opponents are going to defend much, much wider, which is going to hurt my EV of opening there. Yeah, I remember this hand. I was watching the stream and I didn't make much sense to me why he was putting in money there with ace jack. It's like one of those middling hand that either. Yeah, I'm not sure what it what he was trying to accomplish. If he was trying to get called by worse or if he was bluffing. Ace nine can three bet here. You can also call. They probably prefer to three bet. We don't want to play a multi way pot with ace nine. And it's also not a great hand to play post flop with in general, even versus one opponent. In position, though, it's fine. Definitely better than folding. Discipline fold there from Graftuckle, folding the 9 8. Discipline fold from me with the 9 8 suited. So yeah, I think this is, that's it's pretty clear at this point that you just have to play a lot tighter at final tables than you normally would. I think Aces is gonna race here, yeah. <laughs> um, and I should defend the big blind with my suited queen five. And let's take a flop. Mm. Yeah, don't see this going any other way than quarter pot and a fold. Yeah, queen nine opens. I assume takes it down. Maybe gets a call by uh, jack eight, although don't think so. Yeah, snap falls. Yeah, ace king again should take it down. Or I assume it's like deep enough now that he can probably call here. I think the reason why Graftek folded a nine eight off earlier versus me was because. When we have less than 20 and we defend the big, if we flop something decent, we kind of have to go with it or like it's going to cost us too much. But when we have 75 blinds, um, we have a lot more room and a lot more playability and we can actually afford to call a one or two big blinds post flop to see a turn. But when we have 15 blinds, it's, it starts getting a little bit too expensive and it's just not worth it. Like the cost reward ratio isn't good enough. Um, so we're a little bit shallower now. Obviously, blind's gone up, but the stack dynamic is pretty much the same. Kasun's shipped up pretty nicely, 75, 77 big blinds now. Easy with Aces has been able to withhold his lead. We've lost two players. I'm uh, hovering around 22 big blinds. Deuces goes for a bet here versus under the gun. And yeah, also out the king queen. Doubt nines are gonna fall. That would be wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Second time we see that happen. Uh, the third third best hand bets and, and takes it down. This goes to show that people respect races in multi-way pots so much, or bets, I should say. That's something to take in mind. Although I'm not sure deuces is, is a bet there in, in theory. On the on the ace queen. Export after flatting the button versus under the gun and the big blind. Yeah, I would have normally done something there, but yeah, given my stack depth and that we're at a final table, sort of handcuffed and have to give him the pot, unfortunately. That is a, why those type of holdings just go down so much in value when we're at final table and 
when we're getting short. It's when we can't profitably float or, or check raise. Or, I mean, we probably profitably can, but it gets too risky and uh, we just can't afford it in like long term if we start doing that. So uh, we just have to give up earlier in the hand than we want. And therefore they just lose so much playability. All right, here we go. Oh shit, I remember this. <laughs> So I get sneaky here and just call the button. Figuring that, you know, I have 1.3 behind, the pot is 500k, it's going to be easy to get the money in post-flop. More often than not. And I do want to have some flats here. I don't just want to rip my whole range that I want to play from the button. I think flatting aces and aces only here in that range is usually works out pretty well, but as we can see in this instance, it <laughs> cost me a full double up. Well, I'm not gonna spoil it, but not the best looking board for my aces. Not that I'm worried that I'm losing, obviously, but in terms of getting all the money in there and getting called by worse. Oh, he wasn't even thinking about it with the nines there, even though all the draws missed. Read me like a book. Yeah, big stack playing aggressively from the small. I'll play at queen 10, it's fine hand, but in general, queen 10 usually wants to limp there, but not under these circumstances. Uh, nine eight should fold here. Eight six, I think we know should defend. Now let's take a flop. Hmm. Yeah, I remember you led here. I. F this looks really weak, but I think I should just fold here without any clubs. Um. Glad to see me fold there. I, I didn't think I was. His range uh, is also going to be a lot wider than normal because of the the bounty format. Uh, he's going to defend a lot wider, so he's he actually going to have a lot more two pairs there than he normally would, which is concerning as well. Yeah, under ship EV is no way I'm folding <laughs> king high there too. That tiny stab. I think if we were doing that every time, we would get maximum exploited. But, you know, under ICM final tables, it's, it's just uh, the name of the game. Getting exploited when you're playing against a big stack. It's a different game, really. It's what it is. We're just trying to ladder, basically, and pick our spots well not lose money loss is worth a lot more than money won also always something taking consideration easy with aces trying to show down here snap folds i mean thinking about turning it into bluff I guess I mean Alas will have a fair bit of a nines, pocket nine, especially like the way the hand played out. This is where you wish you just pick up a hand. He calls it with the four high. At least you're always alive, you know that. <laughs> Well, this graphical has pocket fours. At least have two live cards. And I'm not even sure if he would shove pocket fours there. I don't think so. Even though he's super short. I think shoving those small pairs when you're always getting called is pretty bad. You'd rather just shove two high cards. 
Um, yeah, so I ripped the the king queen off here, and I, one of my students asked me about that, and I think that's the preferred play with 20, 22 big blinds on the button. We're not really looking to induce. We don't want to raise and face a shove from ace x that could have easily been avoided by ripping all the money in. And uh, even when we do get called, we usually have a fair amount of equity and we have the blockers and stuff like that. So it just prefers to pick up the, the 190 in the pot uncontested more often than not than looking to play post flop. The same goes for even in chip EV scenarios. Those candidates actually prefer to rip it in see the mid aces the offsuit aces they prefer to shove as well the small pairs obviously so there's like this hand class and categories of hands that prefers to just rip it in pre they can really profitably raise call and they benefit a lot from folding out better hands or hands that has a lot of equity versus them not loving Scenario where you get check raised there when you're betting the ace king, uh, but so far I think easy with aces has played pretty honest post flop I must say so I wouldn't be too worried about it. He's done some funky things pre flop, but post flop he's been pretty honest so far. He hasn't gone out of line basically at all. I think. Which again, you get certain different types of players. Some players are very honest post flop, and some are very honest pre flop, and some are not honest at all or <laughs> honest in both ways. So it's important to di differentiate and really try to figure out what type of opponent you're playing against and, and not confuse them because just because someone is crazy pre flop doesn't mean they're crazy post flop and vice versa. So you can make big mistakes there. It's be like a categorizing a player as being crazy and loose and aggressive, but it's actually only aggressive versus opens, like the numbers guy we saw earlier. It wasn't actually opening that wide at all. So when he did open, you have to adjust to that. And when he does three bet, you have to adjust to that. So you know he's going to three bet a lot wider, but it's not necessarily going to open that wide. This is actually an interesting hand. Sorry, I kind of missed this. Um, let's uh, let's rewind and watch that hand again. Okay, so I opened the ace ten under the gun. Prop flop defends the big, pretty standard so far. Then this board, pretty good for his range, not very good for mine. I'm not opening fours or fives here. He has, you know, six, seven suited and all that stuff. So I don't have, he has more nines. But I still, with the ace of hard blocker, uh, it's a pretty nice candidate to just bet and get two over cards to fold, two over cards to the nine, I should say. And then just try to show down from here, unless we improve. And now the king turn, I, I could. You know, I've, I don't think it's a good card for me. I think it's a common misconception that, like, okay, wow, the king got there, so now I got to continue barreling because I have more kings in my range. But actually, when we see bet this board, we actually don't have that many kings. Yeah, we have the, the king X of hearts and the king X of diamonds, but there's not that many high card combinations. And also, ace king, we would check back some portion of the time. And when our opponent calls, when he check calls the flop, he's actually going to have a fair amount of kings. So he's actually going to connect with his king a fair bound, not to mention the king four, the king five, the king nine. Uh, hands that he wouldn't check raise on the flop, but he's definitely going to continue versus the bet, especially when I bet on the larger side. So it's actually, uh, I would say, a better card for my opponent's range. So that's why I don't think I should continue bluffing on the turn. But then when the heart gets there on the river, now I think I have a few more options available. I do like to bluff here, and I really like it because I would check back a lot of 
not a lot, but definitely some flush draw combos. I'm blocking, although my opponent never has queen 10 here, except queen 10 of hearts, which, you know, it's irrelevant because I don't have the 10 of hearts. I can definitely have queen 10 in my range. I would probably most likely play king jack this way, pocket jacks for sure. And yeah, all of those flush combos that I check back the turn with because they have some showdown value and I don't want to bet fold the turn. That would be real disaster with ace high flush draw. So I really like yeah, my bet here. Obviously it can fold out a lot of the 4x, 5x, 9x. Um, I think even some, maybe not a lot of king x, but some king x. And yeah, if there was ever a bluff candidate to do it with, I think this is definitely up there as the top one. Ace King should raise here. I think. Yeah, again, in this bounty format, we just want to have a really aggressive race uh, first in strategy. Blind versus blind more so than we normally would. King Jack should just call. Back in the day, you should, people used to like blindly just rip in King Jack off here. 20 blinds uh, obviously with this with the bounty is a little bit different but it's definitely not a great play because what you do is just you get called by ace jack and king queen and you fold out all those worst kings and jacks in your opponent's range so it's really really not um, a great option much better to just call and play post flop king jack off plays great post flop and yeah can get a lot of value from those dominated kings and jacks in our opponent's range. Uh, 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 so I have 30 here. There's a bunch of 30 X stacks. Yeah, I think I just want to rip in ace king there, given ICM. Don't think I want to induce. Maybe I do with, with the suited combo. In particular, just because it plays a lot better than the offsuit combos, but in general, I, I know ace king, ace queen, and the mid pairs there just wants to rip in, take their equity, and go all in. Uh, ace uh, kind of open here and take it down. Ace King gonna open and uh prop flop's gonna call. Let's take a flop. Small C bet. Whenever there's not as big of a threat to get check raised, um, <laughs> um there's uh, really not as much merit to betting big anymore. So that's why we can see that you know most players uh, like to put a small C bet, especially in easy with aces shoes, where he still a good defender with ace king. I mean, mandatory call when we face the check race, especially it wasn't that big. Interesting that uh, proud flop just gave up and we turned an open ender. Huh. Okay. You would have thought that that would be a really good. Uh, Hard for him to continue barreling and then potentially give up on the river, but steady check folded. Yeah, but what I was saying is that uh, whenever the threat of getting check race isn't as big, we can size down, especially with his easy with aces shoes where he's gonna. Okay, let's talk about this hand first. So I defend the pot. Size bet on the uh, turn. Wait, let's replay this hand as well. I wasn't really paying attention. See Amino last folding fives there again. Discipline fold. Limp pot. I think Proudflop wants to raise first in with this combo. 
definitely would have worked, would have folded out. Dominated hand, like the queen three. Uh, so yeah, I, I like to check back with the top pair here and the shitty kicker. We want to check back some queens, and I think this is a great candidate to do it with because it's not great. And then we face the pot size bet on the turn. Now we have a pretty easy call. We've suddenly widened our opponent's range by a lot. Uh, he's going to you know, bluff with any 7x, 10x, even some 5x and jack x. So tons of different bluff, bluffing candidates here and he could even be value betting a nine here so uh, yeah easy call even versus the big size and then we get the ace on the river and uh, let's see what happens so my opponent tags for a while and then he throws out this 90 percent pot bet ish uh so here i have an interesting spot obviously so given what I said about my opponent's turn strategy and where I am in my range, I'm not going to check back that many strong hands on the flop. Uh, so my turn range is going to be quite vulnerable, and I'm also going to have a lot of 10x, jack x, 7x, uh, and one pair type of holdings, obviously, that aren't uh, necessarily a queen. So when that's the case... I'm actually quite high up in my range because I'm just going to have so many auto folds here, like the 7x and 10x, jack x, even some king x. And uh, yeah, I shouldn't have many ace x, maybe some that I didn't raise pre. Yeah, I would definitely have some lower ace x, which would obviously also be easy calls. And I would have some two pairs that I picked up on the turn that, that I didn't like to raise. Like a hand like six nine or eight eight nine um, could definitely be feasible as well, but I just thought that my opponent shouldn't have many ASX the way the hand played down. Uh, he shouldn't be. I could I could just couldn't see him firing pot with you know ace ten or ace seven or ace jack on the turn, and I don't see I didn't see him firing pot with ace eight or ace nine maybe ace nine that would make sense or ace queen but again i think he would raise ace queen pre-flop i think he would most likely stab ace queen on the flop you could even stab ace nine for value so i guess ace nine was like my biggest concern or maybe like pocket nines uh but other than that i just still think my opponent has so many bluffs here i managed to find a call which was Pretty huge because it's, it's a big swing in my stack. If I lose here, I'm down to 1.6, but instead I chip up to 